gather back together. Father, we do bow our hearts before you, and Lord, we are so grateful that you have gathered us this morning, and Lord, we thank you for the word, and Lord, we, we pray that you would truly come in and that you would just really release the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I pray that you will cause the light of the glory of Christ to shine into our hearts, Lord, and that you will reveal yes, Christ, yes. Lord, that you will let this word, oh God, go deep within, oh right, God, that right. it will not just be words that fall to the ground. We thank you that the words that you've given Ken are spirit in their life, and we just ask that you come and that you move through him, Lord, and it will be not by power nor by might, but by your spirit, your order to come, Lord God, and we thank you that your word will not come back void, but it will accomplish what you're sending it to do. And God, we pray that it would hit those things in our own heart, Lord God, that need to be exposed, and that you would really come, and you would just really have that, that bride, oh God, that is that one leaning and loving upon you, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you just do it, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. No, that's good. That's good. You did a good job. Amen. 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 Um, today's message is um, one that uh, I was originally planning on teaching when we were in Africa. Uh, you know, like we had shared before we uh, really got, before we left, that each of Michael, Brian, and I each had kind of prepared seven or eight messages. And we knew going in that we probably wouldn't be able to preach 22 messages, uh, that would be more than we could handle and certainly more than the African uh, guys listening could handle. Um, and so anyway, this is one that I didn't get to preach, although uh, it, I, I really believe it's a, a real deep need in uh, the 35, 36 guys that we gathered if they really want to be real messengers of the Lord. Uh, but it's also the reason I wanted to preach it here, a couple of reasons. One, I want to send it. We want to send it over there for them to listen to and watch so they can add it to the other messages. But the other reason I wanted to preach it here is I really believe it's a, it's a message really for our church uh, as well. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been an issue that has uh, really driven me all the time I've walked with the Lord. And it, it's been over the years a real burden uh, that for wanting our fellowship to move into the into a deeper realm of this as well, uh, and so I wanted to share. I think it's appropriate to share here, even though we're going to send it to uh, to Africa uh, as well. And so the title of it is "Communing with the Indwelling Christ." Communing with the Indwelling Christ. Um, we. Uh, you know, like we talked about when we were uh, when we shared the report for Africa, we did a, a a different theme each day of the the seven days. We did a different theme each day related to the uh, to the themes that we believe that forerunners need if they want to uh, to really walk as messengers and not just as uh, material distributors. Uh, and so one of the days was the indwelling life of Christ was the theme. And this was one of the messages on that, on the communing uh, with Christ, uh, with the indwelling Christ. So that's what I want to talk about today. Let me just share a little bit of a, a testimony as we get into it. Um, you know, I've been, I've been walking with the Lord now. I think it's 47 years. Um, I can always remember because... I came to the Lord. I had a radical salvation about the time that Michael was born. Uh, and so Michael is coming up on his 47th uh, birthday. I'm pretty sure it's 47th birthday. And so, isn't it 47, Michael? 47. Uh, I'm way too young to have a 47-year-old. In fact, even a 52-year-old is like, okay, uh, that's impossible. I, 
uh, I had uh, we I had them when I was seven years old. And <laughs> <laughs> but time moves on. But my, you know, <laughs> we don't. It stops for no man. So here or woman. So here we go. Um, but anyway, I've been walking with the Lord that long, and, and this particular issue of communing with Christ, communing with the indwelling Christ, uh, has been what has guided me over those 47 years. And, I, and you know, I, I, I long, I really long for each of you, I mean, I know a lot of you have a real deep communing relationship with Christ, but I know that there's a need uh, for us all to go deeper, but I think some really, really need this. I, I, I really have a burden for the African guys. They, they are so busy uh, doing the, the serving, serving the Lord that I kind of sense that there's that communing is so lacking. Uh, and I sense it might be here with some, if not all of us. I know the Lord wants to take us deeper in that. And I was just thinking... Without, without the communing relationship, I'm trying to just set the, the importance of it here. Without the communing relationship with the Lord, just thinking in my own life, what wouldn't be here? This church wouldn't be here. Our call as a forerunner wouldn't be here. John. And Stephen wouldn't be here. Um, you know, there, there's so many issues. Our, being a forerunner call wouldn't be here. Life school, I mean, you know, and we, we were, I mean, Michael and Brian and I, and I wish you could see it, Michael and I were, were, were absolutely blown away, amazed at how much life school is penetrating into those 10 nations. It wouldn't be here because all of that, all of that was birthed. Uh, and I'm sure you all have your own stories. I'm not trying to make my story any more so than yours, but it, all of that was birthed out of that communing relationship with the Lord. You know, we're going to talk about guidance in, in, a little bit along a little bit later in the message, but uh, with Without that communing relationship, you know, I wouldn't have sensed the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so it's a huge, it's a huge issue. It's, a, it's a, such an important issue that we all learn to go deep into that communing uh, relationship with the Lord. Uh, we're going to talk about what it means and all of that uh, in the message today. But we need, I, I just want to challenge us all. And myself as well, I want to challenge us. Let's go deep. We're coming into a season. We're coming into a time, I believe, where it's going to be absolutely essential that each and every one of us have our own deep, deep communing relationship with the Lord. We're not going to be able to depend on other people. We're not going to be able to depend on our favorite, uh, our favorite teacher or whatever. We're going to have to have our own deep relationship where we commune human spirit to the Holy Spirit, the indwelling life of Christ within us. It's absolutely essential in this hour that we begin to, that we begin to go deeper and deeper uh, into uh, that. Uh, I believe, I really believe that the bride will not be made ready, individual believer will not be made ready as a bride for Christ without developing that communing, deep communing relationship with the Lord. Uh, so it's really, really important. It's really important on my heart. Uh, uh, I don't want this to be a heavy message necessarily, but I want it to be one that we all take seriously in the fear of the Lord, as Brian talked about earlier uh, today. So let's talk about that uh, today, the communing relationship with the indwelling Christ. Um, Brian, in his book of the, uh, the Indwelling Life of Christ, the second principle of the Spirit-led life is this, he wrote, uh, spirit-to-spirit communication with Christ is the food that strengthens, nourishes, and energizes 
your spiritual life. Uh, it's, the, it's the relationship that guides us. It's the relationship that transforms us. It's the, it's the relationship that leads us. Uh, the, the spirit to spirit relationship. You know, there's the word and there's the spirit and we need both, but our human spirit needs to have that communing spirit, communing relationship with the indwelling Holy Spirit. And, and there's a lot more uh, that we could say about that. But let's talk about it, what it means to commune with that with uh, the Lord and the indwelling life. The scriptures speak really of, of two basic ways that we commune with the Lord. Uh, one is uh, abiding. You know, we, we've seen this in John, uh, John chapter 15. Let me just read that from starting with verse 4. Uh, 15, 4 says, Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot uh, bear fruit, can not bear fruit uh, of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branch. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Abiding causes us to bear much fruit, which is an internal work of the Holy Spirit more than anything. It's abiding in that fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from that, you can do nothing. So what is he saying? That... Uh, we need to abide in Christ, stay connected to the vine. We're a branch, and we need to stay connected to the vine. Uh, abide, the word abide in the Greek basically means just stay, remain, or stay connected. So what Jesus is saying is that, you, you know, we don't, have, we don't compartmentalize. We don't, have, we don't have our relationship with Christ over here, and then we go do our own thing. Then we go to work, and we do our own thing. We, have, we are to stay connected uh, to the vine 24-7, all the time. Now, you know, all of us fail at that. Uh, but the more we can stay connected, the more we live out the reality of this verse. That, we are to, that, that God wants us to stay connected to the indwelling life of Christ. When I'm at work, I'm connected to Christ, the indwelling Christ. When I'm uh, at the grocery store, when I'm doing whatever I'm doing, we need to stay connected uh, to the indwelling life of Christ. And now that's not anything new. I think we all know that. And then there's another aspect of it, though. Not only the 24-7 uh, relationship where we, where we abide, wherever we go, we're taking the indwelling life of Christ with us. Uh, there is also another dimension to that, to that uh, communing with God, and that is sitting at his feet and listening to his words and, and setting aside very specific times uh, and situations so that we can commune with God where it's just a God and us, God and me individually. And, you know, again, we know the, the scripture verses, but Luke chapter 10, verse 38, uh, about the story about Mary and Martha. Uh, now, let me just read that. Now, they were traveling along. He entered a village, uh, and there was a woman named Martha who welcomed her, him into her home. So she welcomed him. She wasn't resisting uh, Christ. She welcomed him into her home. We can put it in this way. She, uh, she welcomed him. We welcome her, or Martha welcomed Christ into her heart. Uh, she wasn't resisting uh, she had a sister called Mary who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations. Now, for the African brothers who will watch this, that word preparations uh, is ministry. It's the same word used for ministry. She was distracted in all of her ministry to the Lord and ministry uh, on behalf of the Lord. Uh, and she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Uh, then, tell me, uh, then tell her to help me. But here's what the Lord said to her. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things. Then he says this, but only one thing is necessary. Only one thing is necessary for Mary has chosen the good part, 
which shall not be taken away from her. And so with that, what is the Lord saying? He said, yes, we, do, we want you to abide 24-7, John 15, but also there's another dimension to this communing relationship with, that, with the Lord, and that is to sit at his feet, to sit at his feet, put away all the distractions, put away all the preparations, to sit at his feet and have that relationship where you're communing with him, listening to his words. Now, it's not said here, but I'm sure that there were times as she was sitting listening to him, she talked to him back. She asked questions. She uh, asked for insight into this and that. And she was listening to his teaching. There was that communication, that relationship uh, there. And, and what does Jesus say about it? He said That's the, that thing is necessary, uh, and it is one thing that will not be taken away. It's important. It's important. And so that's the challenge for us. You know, another, another scripture before we uh, talk about the, the, the relationship between the two. Um, 2 Timothy 2.15, uh, depending on the translation, it either says study or be diligent to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, who can rightly divide or rightly handle the word of truth. And so there's a, there's, a, there's a diligence that's not only abiding, but there's a diligence to sit at the feet of the Lord, uh, to uh, be diligent, to be able to uh, be approved as one who can handle accurately the scriptures, handle the word of truth. Also, one more scripture. Uh, Jesus to the church at Laodicea said, I want to come in and dine with you. I want to come in and I want to sit with you and, and fellowship with you and do all those uh, things. So there's t really two dimensions of this communing relationship with Christ. One is the 24-hour, seven-day-a-week abiding. Wherever we go, we're to take Christ with us, with the indwelling Christ who lives within us, and within our spirit. We take him with us wherever we go. Hopefully, to lead us, to guide us, to control us so that our flesh doesn't rule, but Christ who lives within us rules as we go uh, throughout the day. Even when on the plane we have a uh, ugly old, old French man who wants to uh, lean back and in in, in, uh, take our seat, uh, which Brian did, by the way, did a really good job uh, of, of abiding in Christ with that, he did. Uh, uh, I thought he, I thought he did good, probably a lot better than I would have done. I, I don't know if I, that is true or not, but he did a good. He really did a good job uh, on, on that. And so, you know, we all we all tend to let our flesh rule from time to time. But the goal is to abide where Christ rules wherever we go. So that's one aspect of this communing. We're to commune with Him throughout the day. But there's a second dimension of it, and I think this is really where most of the body of Christ really misses it, uh, is we don't take the time to sit at his feet, to listen to his word, to uh, g dig into the, the scriptures themselves uh, in order uh, to, to be transformed. There are other aspects, and we're going to get into the impact of this kind of a lifestyle. But here's, here's, how, here's how it works, I believe. If we have that time on a regular basis of sitting at his feet, listening to his words, uh, meditating on the scriptures, uh, praying and listening, journaling, whatever our relationship uh, would entail, what happens is, because remember, the indwelling spirit lives within our spirit. And so what it's intended to do is permeate into our soul, into our mind, so that we don't live by human reason. We live by the, the, the wisdom of the Lord, the mind of Christ. Penetrate into our will so we don't make decisions based on what we think, what we want to do, but we make decisions based on what Christ wants us to do. Our emotions uh, penetrate into our emotions so that we don't 
uh, live in anger or depression or what are, or the other issues, but that we allow the, the Spirit of Christ to penetrate and to control our emo emotions so that he controls those things, penetrate into our body, into our actions, into our cravings, into our walk. That's the goal of that. So here's how it works, I believe. If we have that regular time with the Lord, if we have that time where uh, we are sitting at his feet, abiding in him, listening to his words, reading, studying, or be diligent to, to go into the scriptures and to get insight, what that causes, in a practical way, what that causes to happen is that causes our spirit man to arise above our soul, our self-life, our body, and our actions. It causes the spirit of God uh, to, to, to rise up so that when we go and we start abiding, you know, we go to work or wherever we have to go, the spirit, because of that time, the spirit has risen up within us, and so it's a lot easier for that spirit man within us to speak to the mind who wants to think uh, human reasoning or things that are, that are not consistent with God. He wants to speak to the will who wants us to make, where we want to make our own decisions. So as a spirit of God rises up within us, then it begins to control us as we go in that 24-7 abiding. So it becomes really a, a, a really crucial aspect of the walk, of walking in the indwelling life of Christ, is to have that time set apart for the Lord with the scriptures, with uh, uh, just our relationship with worship, personal worship, journaling, praying, listening, all of the above, because that causes our spirit, our spirit man to be strong, and we want our and, and as our spirit man is strengthened and, and and grows strong, then it naturally will control uh, our self life and our our flesh and all of those things uh, as we go about our day abiding. So both of those aspects are really critical if we really want to walk in the fullness of what God wants for us. We, we definitely need to abide, stay connected to the Lord, and we all fall, you know, we all fall short on all of these things. So this is not intended to condemn, or, but it is con intended to say, let's try to adopt uh, 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 this type of relationship uh, in uh, our lives. Uh, because as we go abiding, if we have that time uh, on a regular basis of sitting at his feet, listening to his words, studying the scriptures, reading the scriptures, meditating upon the scriptures, then uh, what will happen uh, is uh, our spirit will arise and it's a lot easier as we go about our day to walk with the Lord and to walk in the, perp in the, in the, the, the reality of his will as opposed to what our flesh might tend to do. Amen. Can I hear an amen on that? Amen. amen. Say, Ken, I'm going to start sitting at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Okay. All right. Good. Good job. Okay. I'm holding you to it. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, the impact, the impact of a lifestyle of communing like that. Um, I had a, I listed about uh, seven ways, seven areas of impact that this lifestyle of communing, uh, especially sitting at his feet. Uh, I'm really emphasizing sitting at his feet because I think that's really where the, the, the main issue is for, uh, for probably all, everybody in the body of Christ, really, um, more so than the abiding aspect of it. Uh, but here are seven things, and I won't be able to talk about all of them. I'm just going to talk about four, I think. But living in this relationship, especially sitting at his feet, listening to his words, that type of thing, uh, it produces a greater union with Christ. That's the first one. Uh, a greater intimacy with Christ. Uh, increased revelation uh, with Christ. Uh, guidance of the Holy Spirit an increase in the trans, being transformed into the image of Christ, 
Uh, and then the sixth one uh, is friendship uh, with Christ. Friendship. So I guess there's six of them. The six of them I came up with. Friendship. All of those are enhanced and come forth out of that relationship of communing with Christ, but specifically, I believe, emphasizing sitting at his feet uh, and listening to uh, his words. Um, so let's talk about, let's talk first about uh, union uh, with Christ. You know, Ephesians chapter 5 talks about that. Uh, Paul, in Ephesians chapter 5, he uses the analogy of the husband and the wife, but then he, he says, okay, I'm not just talking about marriage. I'm not just talking about the husband and wife. I'm talking about the relationship between Christ and the church. So he uses the marriage relationship as a, as a picture of, of coming together uh, in, in union uh, with Christ. And you can, you, know, you can read all of that in, uh, in chapter 5 of Ephesians. But uh, let me just, let's just start with verse uh, 30. The older I get, the smaller this font gets in my Bible. It's amazing how fonts shrink, get smaller as you get older. Uh, verse 30, uh, because we are members of his body. Then verse 31, for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. The mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Uh, and, and so, you know, that's the, the, the passage in Genesis where we, they, we use in, in our wedding ceremonies about the two shall become, they'll leave their father and mother and they shall become one flesh. Now, and even when I, when I speak to uh, couples in premarital counseling, I talk about that. Okay, that's, that yes includes the physical coming together physically, but it's a lot more than that. It's coming together uh, in our soul, in our, with our mind, with our will. Uh, our emotions, our actions coming together as one in every uh, dimension. Uh, and you know, uh, uh, Donna and I have been married now for 54 years, uh, and it's amazing how over that period of time, how, you know, you become one. And those of you that have been married for a, a, a while understand this. It's amazing how you become one. Uh, you become one, you begin to think alike, you begin to uh, want the same things, you begin to uh, would, you know, make the same types of choices, and you become one. You know, it was interesting, uh, last night, um, Donna uh, and Angie and Heather went over to uh, Catherine Stevens' wife, Catherine, they had a baby shower for her, uh, over in Lawrenceville area, somewhere over in that area of town. And so it was amazing. I was like, I was getting so lonely. It's like, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, man, I, I mean, and you know, during the day, I mean, we're, I mean, it's different, but this was like, they left about four o'clock or something like that. And then got home at, at 10, I think, or something. Uh, but I was like, I was so lonely. I want you know because why? Because we become one, and it was like a, it's it's like uh, you know what am I going to do for dinner? You know, uh, what if I have dirty clothes and I'm good? No, no, not that. No, 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 not that, not that. Uh, but but you know, and I believe I really uh, this is one a little bit off the point, but I really believe part of the reason I was so lonely. Uh, is I really believe the Lord was making that as a picture. You know, the, like Paul in, five, in chapter 5, the husband's a picture of Christ, the wife, the wife is a picture of the bride. And I think Christ, I know this is the Lord saying this, I think Christ is lonely. Yes. See, where's my bride? Where's my bride? I want I want to fellowship with her. Yeah. So it's a challenge to us all. It's a challenge to us all. But it's, but out of this, going back to the point of union, the the bride 
made ready will be in full union with Christ. You know, if you look at the, if you look at the journey through the tabernacle, the bride's got to get to the Holy of Holies. The bride made ready. She's got to get to the Holy of Holies. You know, you can be separate in the outer court and even to a measure in the holy place. But when you get to the Holy of Holies, the only person that could enter into the Holy of Holies was the high priest. And now high priest, you know, Hebrews tells us that Christ is our high priest. So the only way we're going to get into the Holy of Holies is to be in union, union with Christ, one with him, because only he can go in there. The bride made ready will be in full union with Christ. Now, there's a lot to being in union with Christ, but it's when our life and his life is one. Now, we're not going to get there without a communing relationship with him. I mean, there's a lot more to it than that, a surrender of our life and things along those lines. But communing with Christ is foundational to our becoming one in full union with Christ. So a huge challenge for us. But the Lord's in this season of hitting things deeply right now and bringing purification like Brian was leading in prayer uh, before we came online. Union with Christ, a foundational principle to develop that union with Christ is that communing relationship with him. Amen. That's the first one. Amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you, brother, and for the amen. Okay. Uh, now, the second one, that was union. The second one that I want to talk about uh, is revelation. A communing relationship with, with Christ will produce much deeper revelation of Christ, his word, and his ways. Um, you know, especially, I mean, this is true for all of us, but, you know, especially to our African brothers who will be uh, watching this, hopefully, as, as pastors and as uh, messengers, uh, you know, you don't want to be an echo of somebody else. You want to be a voice, a voice from the throne. We all want to be that. And even, even to those of us here who are not pastors, you know, on your job or whatever, you want to be able to speak the word of the Lord. You want to have, you want to have clear doctrine. You want to have discernment uh, of, of error. Uh, uh, you know, that when we listen to other ministries or listen to me or Brian or whoever, you, you want to be able to have discernment on what is true and what is not true. So you want the revelation uh, of the scriptures. Uh, and so you'll not get that without a deep communing relationship with the Lord. It's out of that communing of sitting at his feet, letting the scriptures penetrate into your heart. Those are the kinds of things that will produce that deeper revelation. You know, I could read some scriptures, but I won't turn to it, but 1 Corinthians chapter 2, you know, talks about uh, the, 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 the deep things of God. You know, nobody knows the thoughts of God. No one knows them except the Spirit of God. And so he goes deep into our spirit and brings forth revelation. Uh, and that revelation is what guides us and, and it brings joy. Uh, you, you know, uh, Donna and I have this... Uh, this pattern we do, we, you know, in the morning, what we do is we uh, will, you know, have our quiet time. We'll have our time uh, with the Lord. We, uh, I go upstairs to the office and she gets in the bedroom and we have our time with the Lord. And then, uh, you know, after that, we come back together. And I know we have a lot more time than a lot of you have, but so I'm not trying to say this is for a pattern for everybody, but we, we come back and then together and then we pray together uh, after that. Uh, and so it's always interesting. I can look at her and tell if she's had a good quiet time. And she can look at me, you know. If I've, had a, if I've not had a good quiet time, it's okay, let's pray, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> if I've had a good quiet time, it's hello, let's pray. <laughs> and she's the same way. <laughs> 
But what, it, what makes a good quiet time is what? Say the word. What? Okay, that too, but that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, the revelation, the revelation. When you get revelation, when the Lord speaks to you uh, and get revelation, uh, you know, that, uh, that gives you that joy. Uh, you know, I was thinking, I was like, time change, you know. You know, we were, I was telling Brian, yeah, I'd like, kind of like to preach this message. And he said, yeah, preach it this Sunday. Then I started thinking, okay, the time's going to change. An hour, less sleep. Everybody's going to be tired. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I, thought, oh, I don't really want to fool with preaching this message. Uh, you know, and I kind of, I, in, a, in a way, I could, I think, I really think I could live happily ever after without ever preaching again. Although I do, kind of, I enjoy it, you know, when, once it, Goes, but I mean, there's a lot of warfare with this message. You know, it was uh, a lot of warfare in preparation for this message. But you know, one thing that I, I don't think I could live without, and this wasn't always the case. It, you have to develop it. I don't think I could live without that time of sitting at his feet and listening to his words and digging into the scriptures and letting him speak. Uh, the scripture. That's, I don't think I could live without that. I could live without preaching, even though I do, you know, I do enjoy it, but I couldn't live without that relationship. That's the joy of my walk with the Lord. Uh, and I, I long for every one of us to have that same joy uh, in their relationship. Uh, you know, my Time with the Lord has changed over the years, you know, in terms of the amount of time. Uh, you know, when I first started, when I first got saved, I, I had a high-pressure job in downtown Atlanta at Peachtree Center downtown, and I lived, we lived in Marietta. And so, you know, there was a lot of pressure, and my time with the Lord was a lot shorter uh, then, uh, then. And, you know, over the years, the Lord's given me more time to, to have with that and and. You know, so it doesn't have, it does not necessarily a, a long period of time. If you have that, it's great. Uh, but it's that time with him where he, where you, he able, he's able to speak into your life and, you, and give you revelation. But my, the revelation that I get for wh whether it's good or bad or whatever it is comes out of that time. Um, I mean, I know there's a series that I've written the notes on, and I think I'll preach it at some point in time, is Living as Daniel in Babylon. But that, that whole series, God began to speak. First, it was I was taught, writing some stuff about the bride in Revelation 17 and 18, and come out of, you know, come out of Babylon. So you don't participate in her plagues and participate in her sins and receive her plagues. And then, out of that time of the Lord, the Lord began to say, Look at Daniel, who lived in Babylon without being of Babylon. So I started reading that, and then the Lord began to speak to me and said, look at the book of Jeremiah, because the prophet Jeremiah, he was the prophet right before and up to the time and even after the time when they went into Babylon. So he, he was speaking to, uh, to Israel, <coughs> the southern kingdom. He was speaking to them, to Judah, and he was telling them, calling them out of that to repent so they didn't have to go into Babylon and they didn't listen. And there were a lot of things there. And then the Lord began to speak. He said, okay, go to 1 Peter. Uh, and 1 Peter is, a, is a, a writing where Peter talks about how to endure the suffering that comes when, you know, Babylon, you're living in Babylon. It even says that in, in 1 Peter uh, toward the end of the book. But, although, but the revelation for that came out of that time with the Lord. Uh, now, your revelation might be totally different. It might not even be around a teaching message series. It may be about revelation for what you need uh, to do, a revelation of the scriptures of how, what God wants to deal with in your life. But revelation, uh, true revelation, comes out of that relationship. Uh, and out of that uh, sitting at his feet, putting away the distractions and allowing him to speak to us. You know, again, going back to the tabernacle, you got the outer court, 
<coughs> the holy place and the holy of holies. The, the, the light on the outer court is natural light. The light on the holy place is the, the candelabra. The light in the holy of holies is the glory of God. Put that in, revel, in the concept of revelation. Out of court revelation is just natural reading of the scriptures. You don't need revelation. Uh, you read uh, the scriptures and it says forgive. You know to forgive. It says to, to, to give and you give. Uh, you know, it, 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 there's, it gives you a list of the deeds of the flesh and you know, okay, I don't need to participate in those deeds of the flesh. That's the natural light. But then there's the, the light of the Holy Spirit that shines on the, on the Word, which is beginning to get into revelation, the need for revelation. The revelation of the Holy Spirit begins to shine on the natural scriptures and brings forth uh, revelation and truth. And then there's the holy place, uh, and the, the hidden manna is in that holy place. And that hidden manna is of deep things that you can't even get, you know, in the holy place. It's in the holy of, I mean, the holy of holies, the hidden manna. So revelation, deep revelation comes out of a, out of a communing relationship with the Lord. Okay, now let's go to the third one. And the third one is guidance. Guidance of the Holy Spirit. A communing relationship with Christ will produce spirit-led guidance. You know, John talked about the Father. Jesus said, I will send the helper. Uh, the helper and the help, part of the function of the helper is to give you, uh, to give you guidance. Uh, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. This is so important that we get guidance. I, I have this burden that um, so many believers miss so much of what the, the Lord wants them to be guided in, whether it's something to do, whether it's uh, a situation to deal with or what it is. They miss it, and they never even know they've missed it, because they don't have that relationship of sitting at the feet of Christ and listening to his words. Um, how much have, well, have we all missed? And, you know, even though I have had that relationship for a number of years, I don't know how much I've missed on it either. But I think about, you know, several life changing events that I would have never come to decisions on, on my own. Like, I'll just, go, I'll just use, I'll just share a couple of them. Like, going into ministry at the beginning, at the, when, in, in, this was 1983, when the Lord called us into ministry. I was, I, I was a 25% partner of a, with three other guys on a, uh, with a hospital company that where we owned hospitals. And it wasn't, I mean, I couldn't just go sell stock because it was a privately held company. And the Lord called me into ministry. I mean, it wasn't like something like, oh man, I would really like to leave this hospital company uh, and go into ministry. In fact, it was the exact opposite, although it was, not the most fun being in the hospital company with the three partners I had. One of them was great. The other two, not so much. But um, <laughs> so in one way, it sounded, yes. <laughs> but I didn't tell Donna this. We've grown closer together over the, since 83. But uh, I had personally guaranteed uh, about 30-something million dollars in debt. And I thought... You know, how am I going to walk away from all this? So I would have never made that. I would have never made that decision on my own. But the Lord spoke and said, you know, I'm calling you to ministry. Do it. 
And so we started walking blindly that way in response to what I'd heard in my time with the Lord, not out of just like, oh, I think I would love to get out of this business and go into ministry. It's the last thing, really, pretty much the last thing I wanted to do. Uh, but then, you know, there's a lot to it. I mean, I'll just really make it quick. But then, uh, you know, about 30 days after Don and I, you know, at the Baptist church, you go down to the altar and do everything down at the altar. So we went down to the altar and surrendered to the ministry. About 30 days later, we get this offer to buy our company, uh, which we had no idea that that was going to happen. So God orchestrated the details of guiding us through this step by step. But the point I want to make here, and it all worked out, uh, not that it was easy, but it all worked out, um, and the Lord used the sale of the company to help us in the transition uh, you know, because we had all the kids that were, we only had two at the time, but, you know, they uh, were used to a relatively comfortable lifestyle, and the whole thought of being completely broke was not too appealing to any of us. <laughs> yeah. And so the Lord gave us the, the ability to transition and, you know, to do that into uh, the ministry so that I'm not quite as broke as I was anyway. But that all came out of hearing God out of that time. And, and you know, I'm not, I won't take the time to go through all the different situations, but there have been, I jotted down like five or six, seven life-changing events uh, that the Lord led us in that came out of this time with the Lord. And it just, uh, I mean, I, it, sometimes when I think about it, I think, how much are so many people missing because they don't ever hear? They, and the reason they don't hear is because they're distracted with all the cares of life and all that to the point that they don't have the time to really sit at the feet of Jesus and do it. Uh, and so guidance is a huge issue that comes from that indwelling life. He wants to guide us. He wants to guide us on a, uh, in terms of mission. He wants to gu guide us in terms of transformation. He wants to guide us in terms of coming into that union. All of those things. But uh, we have to allow him the time and opportunity to speak to us for that uh, to happen. Okay. Guidance. Okay. Then I think I've got one more. Uh, this is a biggie too. Um, a communing relationship with Christ is important in bringing transformation into the image of Christ in fullness. Um, I, I'm kind of committed, uh, convinced of this, that if we don't have that time set apart, and I'm focusing on the, the sitting at his feet aspect to this, not just the abiding. Because what will happen, this is a little bit uh, out of the, away from the, this point, but what will happen is you'll have that time with the Lord and, and listen, you'll be listening to him and you'll have that time and your spirit man gets stronger. And then maybe when you're cutting the grass or taking a shower or whatever, uh, the Lord will speak to you, uh, revel, insight into whatever the issue was that, that's on his heart and your heart when you're abiding. But if you didn't have that time of the relationship, for your spirit man to arise in strength, then you would miss uh, that. <clears throat> so God doesn't always speak while you're in that time, but out of the time comes the ability to hear his voice with a lot more clarity. Okay, but then, now, then now let's go to talking about being uh, transformed into the image of Christ. I've kind of, this is based on my own personal walk. Uh, I, I think of four ways Four, th four ways God works in our lives to bring us into the transformation to the image of Christ. Because what, you know, what the bride made ready will be transformed so that Christ is formed in our internal man. So that, you know, we no longer live, but Christ who lives in us in fullness. Uh, Galatians, uh, Galatians, uh, uh, Colossians, all of them, uh, all the prison epistles talk about this. 
Christ being formed in us. And that, to me, there's four ways he's worked in my life to do this. First, let me, let me just go through these four ways. The first way, uh, in all, I mean, the reason I'm using these is I think all four of these are come into being when we have that time where we sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to his words. First one is enjoying God in his presence and meditating on his word, listening to his voice. God brings transformation into our being just when we just enjoy him. That's, and that's the best way. I, I, I mean, uh, you know, Lord... Let me just enjoy you and, me, you know, I, I like the cross. I mean, I don't like the cross. I like the work. I like the effect of the cross on my life. But, uh, you know, brokenness has its place. But let me just enjoy you and, you, you know. And that's, and that's true. I mean, it's, you know, Galatians 6, 8, uh, for the one who sows to his own flesh from the flesh will reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. So if you sow to the Spirit, what's the, what's the harvest of the Spirit? Sow into the Spirit, the life of God in you. And there, I love this verse, Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse, starting with verse 26. And Jesus was saying, The kingdom of God is like a man who casts his seed upon the soil. And he goes to bed at night and gets up by day and the seed sprouts and grows. How he himself does not know. The soil produces crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. And so what is this saying? He's saying he casts his seed upon the soil, sows the seed, the word, the, the, the spirit, the relationship. You do, and then you go to bed at night and the next day, I mean, not necessarily the next day, but after a while, that seed that you sow without even realizing it has produced a change in you. Uh, and so, again, that shows the importance of setting that, side of time, that time aside and doing that because it just produces transformation without even realizing it. And I, li I like that uh, method. Amen? Do you like that method? Yeah. So that's the first way that God does by just by enjoying him in his presence. But then there's a, because all of these really have a connection to our time in his presence for our spirit man to rise up and to take control. Uh, making the proper daily choices. This is the second one. Making the proper daily choices. You know, Jesus said, you know, to deny self, Take up your cross daily and follow me. So, you know, every one of us have daily choices we have to make. You know, we all have our mean, grumpy Frenchman encounter on the airplane. You know, not necessarily the same thing, but we all have those things. Those things come into our life, and our, our goal is to deny what our self would do. I don't want to, yeah, my self would say, hey, buddy, Get your seat back up and right now, you know. That's what myself would do. But to deny self, it was like, oh, please, Mr. Frenchman, will you please raise your seat? <laughs> and, and then flight attendant, would you please deal with this grumpy Frenchman? Yeah, you know, you, your spirit, you, you know, you're, but then you deny yourself, you take up your cross, uh, so that you die to what you would like to have, so that you follow Christ rather than follow what your flesh would have. So every one of us are faced with these kind of things, uh, you know, daily. We're, and, you know, we probably miss it more, fail more than we get it right, uh, you know. Uh, but what happens is if we have that strengthened relationship with Christ that comes out of sitting at his feet and listening to his words, we're more likely to deal with a situation once we get into the abiding mode. We're more likely to deal with it properly than if we didn't. Uh, and so that helps us to deny self. But those kind of decisions over day in, day out, dealing with them will bring transformation into our uh, inner man. Uh, 
But the time in the presence of the Lord will help us to deal with them accurately and appropriately there. Uh, okay, that's the second one. The third one, of we're, we're talking about transformation. The third one is accepting God's invitations. Accepting God's invitations. Uh, and we've, we've, we've talked a, a fair amount about this, but this is really important. As you develop that relationship with the Lord, sitting at his feet, listening to what he says, there will be periodic times, not all the time. I, I think back of my 40-something years of walking with the Lord, and maybe there's seven or eight major invitations that the Lord has given to me uh, over that period of time. But the point I was going to make, one, one, the point I want to make is that if I didn't have that time with the Lord, I probably never would have even heard the invitation. I never would have, you know, and, and where would I be? Where would this church be? I mean, the one, uh, the, the most recent one was in 2019 when the Lord began, because we, had, we, we, we had been called as a forerunner ministry since 96. <clears throat> but in 2019, the Lord spoke to me in my quiet time and said, Okay, I want you to be a Zacharias who birthed John the Baptist. You know, prior to that time, our focus was being a John the Baptist who birthed, uh, who birthed a uh, people who would become a bride. After that point in time, we didn't ignore it. We didn't stop doing that. But in addition to that, I want you to be one who births forerunners in addition to birthing the bride birth forerunners who in turn will birth the bride. Now that changed everything about life school. And we started the forerunner school out of that, but it also led us to where we were this couple weeks ago in Africa where we were functioning as Zacharias's to birth John the Baptist's who would birth the bride in the African church. And that came out of time with the Lord. I, it was around Christmas in 2019, I think it was 2019, I was reading the Christmas story and Luke and all that and all out of the blue the Lord spoke I want you to be a Zacharias. Uh, and so that led to all of this. But it came, the point for today is it came out of that relationship. I would have never, if I hadn't had that, I would have never heard that. And so uh, you know, and there's, there's, I won't go into all the eight, but there's been several, several, uh, eight or so, and I've mentioned several of them already, where God gave me major life-changing invitations. Uh, and I really believe those life-changing invitations are crucial for all of us. You know, a lot of mine, not all, but a lot of mine were related to ministry, but it may not be any of yours related to ministry. It may be related to your own personal walk, or, or any number of things. But you'll not hear them if you don't have that time where you sit at his feet and listen to his words. Uh, so that's the third one. The fourth one of, uh, of the ways that God uses to, uh, to transform us, uh, I've entitled brokenness, uh, where God... I mean, this is not something where we can say, okay, yeah, I want to be broken. Um, raise your hand if you want God to break you. I mean, you know, I mean, nobody wants to raise your hand for that. Um, but God takes us all through seasons of brokenness. He takes us to the cross, you know, kicking and fighting usually. He takes us to the cross. Uh, you, you know, I mean, I think of the, when we first started the church. I don't know exactly how many years, but I would say probably 10 years of just, if it were, you know, y'all ever remember that Hee Haw show? If it weren't for bad news, that'd be no news at all. That was kind of like what character, I'd say that'd be to characterize the, first 10 years or so of our church and, and you know, a lot of you were there so you know what it was like it was absolute miserable 
Um, and God, but God was breaking off a lot of me, you know, uh, which I'm thankful for looking back on it. I wasn't nearly as thankful when I was going through it. But I'm looking back on it, I'm thankful for it. But the only thing that I survived, I think, was because I was ready. I said, Lord, okay, I, I, you called me into the ministry. I did not volunteer for this. You called me. Now, why are you taking me through all this stuff after I just to be obedient to what you said? That's kind of what was going on in my mind. But then the only thing that gave me the ability to, to sustain was my time with the Lord. Uh, I mean, that was kind of the time, part of that time anyway, was the time of the vineyard, you know, CD or tape of the month, and you'd get, you know, the Winds of Worship series. And uh, I remember Winds of Worship 11. Man, I, I listened to that over and over and over and over again. Uh, because that was the only source of strength to make it through the deep broken times of deep brokenness was my time in the Lord. Otherwise, I don't think I, I don't think I would have made it without that. Um, you know, at the same time, the Lord gave me a lot of revelation. I mean, I remember getting a lot of revelation about the book of Esther and a lot of other, other things during that time frame. But the point for today is that it was that, time with the Lord that gave me the strength to endure the brokenness. And I know a lot of you are going through brokenness in a lot of different ways right now. Nothing related to ministry for most of you. But what that time with the Lord is where you get the strength to endure. Uh, and I just have to believe, just like he did with us, there was a purpose in it you know, a purpose for his good that you can't see when you're in there. You're walking through the valley of the shadow of death and you can't see any, you can't see the end of the tunnel. You can't see that. But God has a purpose. I just really believe God has a purpose in that. But he wants you to endure it. And that time in his presence is what gives you the strength to endure. Um, so that's transformation. All of these th things, union, um, gu revelation, guidance, transformation, you know, and there are other aspects that I didn't touch on. Those, those come forth as we walk, it, 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 sit, abiding, but also primarily in this case, sitting at his feet and developing that personal relationship where you allow God to speak to you, get into his scriptures, uh, not, not reading a devo listen, this is listen to this now, not just reading a devotional. You can read a devotional and know about Christ, but we don't want to know, just have this time to know about him. We want to get to know him. There's a big difference between that, between those two. So the Lord will lead you as to how to do it. But I want to challenge you, that each and every one of us, let's make this a priority. Uh, it's, it's hard. I mean, we're busy. We live in a busy society. But I know it's important. I know it's absolutely important. In fact, I really sense as we go closer to the com second coming of Christ, it's going to become absolutely necessary to survive in a lot of other ways. Um, you know, we won't go into that. But anyway, let's develop that relationship deeper, personally. Amen. 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 Let's stand up. I want to pray. I want to pray for you. I want to pray this before we uh, go offline because it might be some others that need it. I, that's really, during the worship, I was really sensing that uh, God wants to break off walls between you and God. Where there's a, where there's a, I don't know why, you know, maybe something that happened in your past or where there's a wall between you and God. Maybe it's 
condemnation or guilt uh, or it could be any number of things. But I, I really believe that, that God wants to do that, break off all the walls that separate uh, you from God. So, Father, I just pray that. I pray, Father, that you would draw us all deeper and closer to you as we sit at your feet and listen to your words. We pray, Father, that we would not, that we would not fall short. We know that guidance, we know that transformation, we know that intimacy and union with you and all of those things are somewhat and greatly even dependent upon our walk with you and our time with you. And so we ask, Father, that you would do a deep and a deep work in each and every one of us that we would go deeper, 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 deeper in, in that relationship. And we pray, Father, that you would produce the joy, that it would not be a chore. Lord, I, I, I ask for this, that it would not be a chore, but it would be a joy to sit at the feet of Christ and listen to his words. Lord, I pray that you would give us all perseverance to be diligent, as it says in 2 Timothy, to be diligent to, to, until the time of joy comes. <clears throat> Sometimes the discipline has to precede the joy. We ask, Father, for the discipline to be released, uh, so that, but ultimately we want to see the joy of the Lord in that, Father. I know it's become... My greatest joy in you is to sit with you and hear your voice, get, your, get revelation of your word. And I want, I want that. I'm jealous for this fellowship that each and every one would get that same joy from it. So we ask for that. I do pray, Father, that, that just receive this now. I pray that you would break off every wall that separates us from the intimacy with Christ in the, in the secret place. Break off every way. Come in the name of Jesus and we declare every wall broken right now by the name and by the blood of Jesus. Whether it's from uh, a hurt from the past, a hurt from childhood, or whether it's from uh, condemnation or rejection or whatever it may be, we break we break the power of the enemy off right now in the name of Jesus. And even those that will watch this online, even those that are watching it now, we break the power of the enemy and we ask, we call forth a deeper a time of intimacy with the living Christ, the indwelling Christ in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You cut off the... Well, God bless you. Amen. Amen. So, uh, uh, do you want to say anything or just uh, what? Just a couple of announcements real quick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the message.